a good example was the the accelerating universe. You know, when we found it, evidence for it in 1998 with supernovae, with exploding stars, it was great that there were two teams that lent some credibility to the discovery. But it was not until other astrophysicists used not only that technique, but more importantly, other independent techniques that had their own potential sources of systematic error or whatever, but they all came to the same conclusion. And that started giving a much more complete picture of what was going on and a picture in which most astrophysicists quickly gained confidence. That's why that idea caught on so quickly is that there were other physicists and astronomers doing observations completely independent of supernovae that seem to indicate the same thing. Yeah, that period of uh, of your life, that work with an incredible team of people that uh, won the Nobel Prize, is just fascinating work. That's, oh, uh, gosh, you know, never in my wildest dreams as a kid did I think that I would be involved, much less so heavily involved, in a discovery that's so revolutionary. I mean, you know, as a kid, as a scientist, if you're realistic, once you learn a little bit more about how science is done and yeah. you're not going to win a Nobel Prize and be the next Newton or Einstein or yeah. whatever, you just hope that you'll contribute something to humankind's understanding of how nature works and you'll be satisfied with that. You know, but here I was in the right place at the right time, a lot of luck, a lot of hard work. Um, and there it was, you know, we discovered something that was really amazing and that that was the the greatest thrill, right? I couldn't have asked for anything more uh, than well, being involved in that discovery. So one, so the the couple of teams, the Supernova Cosmology Project and the High Z Supernova Search Team. So the, what was the Nobel Prize given for? It was given for the discovery of the, the accelerating, accelerating expansion universe. of the universe. So maybe not for the elucidation of what dark energy is right. or what causes that expansion. Uh, that acceleration, be it universes on the outside or whatever. It's it just only for the observational fact. So first of all, what is the accelerating universe? So the accelerating universe is simply that if we look at the galaxies moving away from us right now, we would expect them to be moving away more slowly than they were billions of years ago. And that's because galaxies have visible matter, which is gravitationally attractive, and dark matter of an unknown sort that holds galaxies together and holds clusters of galaxies together. And of course, they then pull on one another and they would tend to retard the expansion of the universe. Just as when I toss an apple up, you know, even ignoring air resistance, the mutual gravitational attraction between Earth and the apple slows the apple down. And mm -hmm. if that attraction is great enough, then the apple will someday stop and even come back the Big Crunch, you could call it, or the Gnab Gib, which is Big Bang backwards, right? That's what could have happened to the universe. But even if the universe's original expansion energy was so great that it avoids the Big Crunch, that's like an apple thrown at Earth's escape speed. It's like the, 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 the rockets that go to Mars someday, right? You know, uh, with people. Even then, you'd expect the universe to be slowing down with time. But we looked back through the history of the universe by looking at progressively more distant galaxies and by seeing that the evolution of this expansion rate is that in the first 9 billion years, yeah, it was slowing down, but in the last 5 billion years, it's been speeding up. So who asked for that, right? You know, 